Hello students, welcome back to my channel. Once again, this video, uh, today I am going to explain a new topic from thermodynamics that is uh, effect of temperature on heat of reaction which is called as Kirchhoff's equation which is a uh, very very important or I can say that it is one of the most important questions from thermodynamics okay so most of them pronounce it as uh, Kirchhoff's equation but I want to pronounce it as Kirchhoff's equation so mark it as an important question students what is it effect of temperature on heat of a reaction and last class we completed work done in reversible adiabatic expansion by an ideal gas or a perfect gas hope you have completed the notes and also you have practiced it students okay so let us uh, learn this interesting new topic today that is kirchhoff's equation which tells us or which indicates uh, the effect of temperature on heat of uh, reaction that means uh, this kirchhoff's equation explains or tells us about variation of heat of reaction with temperature okay so how uh, the heat of reaction heat of a uh, chemical reaction varies uh, with the temperature that uh, uh, we can know from Kirchhoff's equation. So that's what I have written here students. Please you also put the side heading effect of temperature on heat of reaction Kirchhoff's equation. Below write down the equation which indicates effect of temperature on heat of reaction is known as Kirchhoff's equation and this equation tells us about variation of heat of reaction with the temperature okay so written so below that uh, uh, what you have to write is suppose if a chemical reaction takes place at two different temperatures for example t1 and t2 then uh, the heat of uh, such reaction also will be different okay students if a chemical reaction takes place i will write here if a chemical reaction takes place at two different temperatures two different temperatures then then heat of reaction also will be different then heat of which reaction students uh, which chemical reaction we are talking about uh, that is it take, if it is taking place at two different temperatures then heat of such reaction also will be different okay now what is this heat of reaction we have already uh, learned about uh, heat content or heat of the reaction which means that uh, the amount of heat evolved or absorbed during a chemical reaction okay so if you want you can write uh, that sentence also students here heat of reaction means heat of reaction means the amount of heat evolved heat evolved or absorbed during a chemical reaction during a chemical reaction okay students so this is what heat of reaction is so kindly note down these sentences in your uh, notebook if a chemical reaction suppose if it takes place at two different temperatures 
then heat of such reaction also will be different and the heat of reaction uh, is nothing but the amount of uh, heat evolved uh, released or absorbed during a chemical reaction okay now let us uh, uh, assume that uh, the reaction is taking place at two different temperatures t1 and t2 okay let us assume the reaction is taking place at two different temperatures T1 and T2. The, now, uh, let us see how uh, the heat of such reaction uh, changes or uh, what would be the change in heat of uh, such reaction taking place at two different temperatures T1 and T2. Okay, students. So, write down below. Suppose if the reaction takes place. Suppose. Write down. Suppose. If the reaction takes place at a temperature T1, then, then change in heat of reaction, change in heat of that reaction would be, of that reaction is equal to, is equal to equal to students do you remember what is this uh, total uh, heat content called as do you remember there is a, t a term introduced to know the amount of heat released or evolved during a chemical reaction do you remember the term students that is called as that is represented by which letter h it is called as enthalpy okay do you remember? Okay. So, here we can write it as change in heat of such reaction is equal to delta H1. Okay. So, when is this uh, heat of reaction uh, delta H1 students? When the reaction is taking place at a temperature T1. Now, you tell me. Suppose if the reaction takes place at a temperature T2, then change in heat of reaction would be equal to delta H2. Very good. Write down that sentence also students. Suppose, suppose, here I am writing, if the reaction takes place at a temperature T2 then then change in change in heat of that reaction that reaction is equal to Equal to how much? Delta H2. Okay. So simple. If we are assuming that the reaction is taking place at one temperature T1. Then change in heat of that reaction will be delta H1. If it is taking place at T2. Then change in heat of that reaction would be equal to delta H2. Okay. And also one more thing. Heat of a reaction. Heat of a chemical reaction. It also depends on a few factors like pressure and volume. That also I am writing here students. We also know that we know that heat of a reaction heat of a reaction depends on depends on factors like pressure and volume pressure and volume written now suppose if the reaction takes we have seen here See, uh, previously we have seen if the reaction takes place at two different temperatures T1 and T2, then the change in heat of that reaction would be equal to delta H1 and delta H2. So, suppose if I assume that uh, 
reaction is taking place at if the reaction takes place at constant pressure if the pressure is kept constant then then heat of reaction then heat of reaction is given by is given by change in enthalpy change in enthalpy so how would you represent change in enthalpy students delta h delta h okay so if the reaction is taking place at constant pressure then heat of reaction is given by change in enthalpy delta h now i will ask you a question if the reaction is taking place at constant volume then heat of reaction is given by change in dash heat capacities we have learned so what is that if the reaction is taking place at constant volume then heat of reaction is given by change in internal energy delta e good so students thermodynamics when you are learning you have to study from the uh, first concept or else you will not understand anything if you study if you start studying from the middle okay so you should have the complete knowledge from the beginning or from the first class so below writing i am writing if the reaction if the reaction takes place at constant volume constant volume then then heat of reaction heat of reaction is given by is given by change in internal energy which is represented by represented or donated by delta e got it students so read carefully all the sentences i am writing uh, for your sake so that uh, you can also easily copy down in your notebook if the reaction takes place at the constant volume then heat of reaction is given by change in internal energy represented by delta e and hence students we have two types of kirchhoff's equations okay why because we are assuming that the reaction taking place at constant pressure then heat of reaction is uh, given by change in enthalpy delta h if the reaction is taking place at constant volume then heat of reaction is given by change in internal energy delta e okay so therefore you please mention so so there will be there will be two forms of kirchhoff's equations two forms of kirchhoff's equations okay so this is the introduction which you have to write when you are asked about effect of temperature on heat of reaction that is called as kirchhoff's equation what all points i have uh, written on this um, sheet you should uh, write down when you are asked this kirchhoff's equation as introductory part students okay now moving on to the derivation so be ready take a fresh new page and we will start the derivation so let us consider let us consider write down students we are uh, now moving towards the derivation let us consider a reaction let us consider a reaction which is taking place at 
constant pressure taking place at constant pressure taking place at constant pressure we have seen that uh, if a reaction takes place at constant pressure then heat of reaction is given by change in enthalpy okay so that you remember i am writing here a reaction let us consider a reaction where a converts into b a is the reactant and b is the product let uh, the enthalpy of uh, a taken as h1 enthalpy of uh, b taken as h2 now change in enthalpy is given by h2 minus h1 so students change in enthalpy as we all know it's given by delta h is equal to h2 minus h1 okay so till here i think it's clear now below you write down differentiating the above equation differentiating the above equation the above equation with respect to temperature capital t with respect to t okay so differentiating the above equation what is the above equation here delta h is equal to h2 minus h1 so this equation we are differentiating with respect to capital t so left side we have delta h so how to differentiate d of delta h by dt is equal to is equal to right side there is h2 minus h1 so d of h2 minus h1 by dt okay so that's the way we differentiate with respect to temperature now we will try to solve this students so is equal to d of h2 minus h1 can be written as d h2 by dt minus d h1 by dt okay so write along with me i just here i remove the brackets so d h2 by dt minus d h1 by dt okay so d h by dt do you remember students what is d h by dt it is nothing but cp what is cp heat capacity at constant pressure so i am writing dh2 by dt can be written as cp2 minus cp1 okay so cp of product minus cp of a reactants so next step would be so left side what is there students left side here d of write down below again d of delta h by dt is equal to now cp uh, uh, 2 minus cp 1 cp of uh, products minus cp of uh, reactants we can show it as delta cp okay is equal to delta cp how we have written here h2 minus h1 delta h same cp2 minus cp1 can be written as delta cp now i will move this uh, uh, dt from denominator to right side so it becomes d of delta h is equal to delta cp into dt got it just i moved dt to right side so it has become d of delta h is equal to delta cp into dt okay clear students till here fine so d of delta h by dt is equal to d of h2 minus h1 here i removed the brackets dh by dt is nothing but cp 
So CP of products minus CP of uh, reactants which can be written as delta CP. So the DT is moved to right side. Now below write down, below write down. Previously we have differentiated. Now we will integrate this one. Integrating. Integrating the above equation. Integrating the above equation within the limits, within the limits, left side what is there students, delta H. So within the limits H1 and H2 on left side, H1 and H2 on left side. And, and right side what is there? DT. Okay. And T1 and T2 on right side. T2 on right side. Okay. Again, I am repeating the sentence for you. Integrating the above equation within the limits H1 and H2 on left side. And T1 and T2 on right side. Written? Okay. Now, so look at this equation. How to integrate within the limits H1 and H2 on left side and T1 and T2 on right side. So, uh, be ready. I will show you. So, in the left side we have D of DH, delta H. So, write down students, integral D of delta H within the limits H1 and H2 is equal to right side delta Cp integral dt within the limits T1 and T2. Okay. Now. The solution of this left side, D of delta H within the limits H1, H2 is written as delta H between H1 and H2 is equal to delta Cp T from T1 to T2. Okay. So, here students we have D of delta H. Okay. So, it is delta H from H1 to H2. Here we have dt from uh, within the limits T1 to T2. So, T from T1 to T2. Written carefully once again. Integral D of delta H within the limits H1 to H2 solution. Delta H from H1 to H2 is equal to delta Cp. Delta Cp integral dt from T within the limits T1 to T2 is written as T from T1 to T2. Clear? Now what would be the next step? So now this becomes delta H2 minus delta H1 is equal to delta Cp into T2 minus T1. Okay? So delta H2 minus delta H1 is equal to delta Cp into T2 minus T1. Okay? Now, from this uh, I am writing delta Cp is equal to, you try writing, 10 seconds time I will give you. So, what would be now delta Cp is equal to, from this expression you try to write students. After that, after you write, I will show you, then check whether you have written correct or not. Delta Cp is equal to. So, your time is up. Now, I am writing left side there is delta H2 minus delta H1 divided by T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1. Okay. Now, delta Cp. What is delta Cp? It is a uh, difference in heat capacities of Products and reactants. We have seen no Cp here. Cp2 minus Cp1 is written as delta Cp. Do you remember here we have uh, written. Okay. So, delta Cp is nothing but difference in heat capacities of products and 
reactants. Now this is equal to change in enthalpy of products and reactants at constant pressure with change in temperature. Okay. So now difference in heat capacities of products and reactants is equal to from this expression students. How, we, how will you write? Change in enthalpy of products and reactants. Okay. So enthalpy of products and reactants. With the change in temperature. So put it in a box. So we will write in the form of a sentence. Write down students. Therefore, therefore, change in change in enthalpy of products and reactants. So, this reaction is done at constant pressure. Okay. So, we have started. Let us consider a reaction taking place at constant pressure. So, finally, we reached at this expression. So, therefore, change in enthalpy of products and reactants at constant pressure. At constant pressure. With, with change in temperature. With change in temperature is equal to is equal to difference in difference in heat capacities heat capacities between products and reactants between products and reactants underline this sentence ma okay so underline this sentence students change in enthalpy of products and reactants at the constant pressure with the change in temperature is equal to Difference in heat capacities between products and reactants. Okay. Now, next what should we che uh, check? We should consider a reaction taking place at constant volume. Okay. So, if the reaction takes place at constant volume, then uh, heat of reaction is given by change in internal energy. Okay. Okay. So, when it is taking place at constant pressure, it is given by change in enthalpy. So, we have uh, taken into consideration the enthalpy of reactants and products. Now, what should we take into consideration when it is taking place at constant volume? Internal energy of reactants and products. Okay, students. Shall we do that also? Okay. Next, write down. Now, let us consider... Let us consider a reaction taking place at constant volume. Constant volume. Okay. So now again same reaction A gives B. Let E1 be the internal energy of reactants. E2 be the internal energy of products. So delta E will be equal to E2 minus E1. Right now, delta E will be equal to E2 minus E1. Okay. Now, same like we did for the previous one. Here also, write down differentiating. Differentiating the above equation. Differentiating the above equation 
with respect to temperature that is capital T on both the sides. On both the sides. Okay. So, with the knowledge of the previous uh, equation, you try to write this one ma. How to write, differentiate, uh, differentiate this equation with respect to T. Started. Okay, I am writing here check. Left side we have delta E. So, D of delta E by dt is equal to D of E2 minus E1 by dt. Okay. So, how will you write? Uh, uh, open up the brackets. Right side is equal to d e2 by dt minus d e1 by dt. What is d e by dt students? Heat capacity at constant volume. So, denoted by Cv. Yes. Cv of products minus Cv of reactants. Okay, in some uh, some of the books you can find like uh, uh, EP and ER that is uh, uh, products and reactants. I have just taken as 1 and 2 so that it would be easy for my students. So finally this will be D of delta E by DT is equal to delta CV. Next moving dt to right side. Same like we did for the previous one. D of delta E is equal to delta Cv into dt. Okay. So after this we have to integrate. Same I am writing here students. Integrating the above equation. integrating the above equation integrating the above equation within the limits now you tell me what should be the limits on left hand side we have delta E left hand side so the limits will be E1 and E2 very good within the limits E1 and E2 on left side and uh, right side limit students. Right side limit should be T1 and T2. T1 and T2 on right side. T1 and T2 on right side. Okay. So now, write up. Start writing. Start integrating the above equation. So integral d of delta e within the limits e1, e2 is equal to right side we have delta cv integral dt within the limits t1 and t2. Clear? Next step, sum must be running. Those who have understood the previous portion. So, those who are not still, uh, those who have not understood, you please write along with me. Slow and steady wins the race. So, left side, the solution of this would be delta E from E1 to E2 is equal to delta Cv into T from T1 to T2. Okay. Now this can be written as delta E2 minus delta E1 is equal to delta Cv into T2 minus T1. Okay. Therefore, therefore delta Cv is equal to left side we have Delta E2 minus delta E1 by T2 minus T1. Okay. 
Now, change in internal energy of products and reactants at constant volume with change in temperature is equal to difference in heat capacities of products and reactants. Put it in a box. So, below uh, this expression, you can write down students. Thus, change in internal energy of products and reactants. Change in internal energy of products and reactants with change in temperature is equal to, is equal to difference in heat capacities of products and reactants. Okay, so this expression put it in a box and below write in the form of a sentence put it in inverted commas and also underline. So these are the two expressions of Kirchhoff's equation. Okay students, so when a chemical reaction taking place at constant pressure and uh, a chemical reaction taking place at constant volume. Clear? Hope I made uh, the derivation very, very, very easy and also clear students. Please uh, write down uh, in your notebooks. So, at the end, there are few points to remember students. You need not uh, uh, write in the exam. So, what you do is just put a side heading points to remember. Points to remember. Points to remember. So, what are those points to be remembered? Write down. Delta H is equal to heat content of a system at constant pressure. Heat content of heat of a reaction at constant pressure. Next, delta E. Delta E. Heat content of a system. Heat content of a system at constant volume. At constant volume. At constant volume. Next. Cp is equal to, Cp is equal to dH by dt, which is nothing but heat capacity of a system, heat capacity of a system at, at constant pressure, at constant pressure. Next, similarly, Cv is equal to dE by dt which is nothing but heat capacity of heat capacity of a system at constant volume at constant volume okay so these are just the points to be remembered students you need not write in the exam Okay, so this is all uh, uh, for today's class students. This video is about uh, Kirchhoff's equation. Is it not interesting? I feel that it's very interesting of all the topics we have learned uh, till now. Right? Okay, so you please uh, uh, copy down in your notebook and twice or thrice you please listen and try to uh, learn and also Try to practice and try to learn this answer students. Okay. So anybody uh, viewing from any part of the country or outside the country. Please uh, uh, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like, uh, share and uh, share with your uh, friends. Okay. So thank you for watching and meet you in the next video with a new topic. Take care. Bye bye.